We are back this week with Trisha Carter. And I'm just going to say if T-Bird quilts, because that's your Instagram handle. <laughs> How are you doing? <laughs> I'm good. Thanks for having me. Thank you for agreeing to do this. So unlike the other interviews I've been doing, because I've been interviewing a lot of photographers, Trish is my first quilter. And I met Trish in a Black girls quilt group because how this, how this all started for me was last spring because my son was going through all the ups and downs, my oldest. I yeah. started doing hand embroidery as a relaxation. And the way I stumbled across hand embroidery is because I watch a shit ton of Chinese dramas and mostly historical Chinese dramas. And one of the things that the harem ladies always do is embroidery. I'm so Are you sorry. okay? Oh, I watched, you know, I noticed that all the harem ladies would embroider and that would relax them. So I tried it and it relaxed me, but I had all these embroidery pieces. I was like, what am I gonna do with them? And I was like, oh, I can quilt them. So then I told you this, I bought a little $69 entry level mm -hmm. brother machine and started playing around with it. I did really goofy looking quilt, <laughs> but then I joined the group to learn and that's where I met you. And then we met and had coffee and you showed me how you went from basic quilting to doing a lot of paper piecing and stuff like that. But how to uh, tell the people that did not hear that story from you like I did, how you got started, how and why you got started quilting. How and why, okay. Um, so I started quilting about maybe two and a half, three years ago. Um, I had my daughter, my third daughter, um, five years ago. <clears throat> and I really wanted to do something different with her blankets. She went to daycare, so you had to bring her a different blanket every week. Um, and I wanted to do something different and none of the blankets were what I really liked. So I went to Joanne and I picked out some great of the snuggle flannel. Mm -hmm. And at the time, my older daughters were in home ec. They were in like seventh, eighth grade. Um, they were in home ec, so they were learning to sew. So I would come home and exploit child labor and make my daughter <laughs> <laughs> sew these blankets that I had put together. Um, because I wanted fun things like sushi and like rock stars and leopard print and things that like little kids, they normally don't have. So <clears throat> I started putting together these blankets and the people at the daycare loved them. And so then they're like, well, will you make one for this or will you make one for that? Um, but every week, every holiday, I would send different little themed blankets. So then obviously I amassed about a hundred little <laughs> flannel blankets that are teeny tiny because they're for babies. And there's not too much you can do with them, but I would always walk past the cotton fabric and think like, wow, like if I could get a hold of this cotton, like what could I do with it? Um, mm -hmm. So my daughter eventually got sick of me exploiting her labor and making blankets. <laughs> She's like, how about I just teach you how to sew? And I was like, great. So she taught me how to sew. Same thing, we had a little like $69 Black Friday brother machine um, and we started sewing and I saw signups for a quilting class. So I took a beginner's quilt class um, and I made my first quilt. And that was about, yeah, like I said, it was like maybe about two years ago, a little over. Um, and I've been rocking and rolling ever since. So did you take the class at Joanne's or somewhere else? No, so I took the class at a quilt shop called um, the Quilter Studio in Fairfax. and. Okay. It was it was an okay experience. I think I'm glad I did it because it definitely like taught me the full process, like start to finish of how you design it, how you cut it. Um, but it also kind of opened my eyes to some things that I I didn't like about quilting as well. Um, but at the time, I thought like, okay, I'm super new, so let me just shut up and learn. You know what I mean? Um, but the more I worked on projects like outside of the class, I think that's where the majority of like my creativity or my inspiration happened. So getting on like joining Facebook groups and um, going to Instagram and going to Pinterest, I think that's done more for me than taking a class has. Um, mm -hmm. So it's just been a different experience. Okay, you know, I'm going to I'm going to follow that thread. What did you see <laughs> kind of now, I don't want to say, I don't want to say, I don't want to characterize it as turned you off because that's not how you characterize yeah, it. Yeah. What, what kind of tickled you, I guess, for, oh, that's not um, a good word. 
was tickled as fun. No, no, like, <laughs> I think it was just so taking the class was was different. Um, even like going to quilt shops is different because I'm I'm not old and I'm not white and you know I've got tattoos and I might have a kid with me and it's just sometimes they kind of look at you like what are you doing here <laughs> um why, why are you in my circle it's kind of like going to the yoga studio or going yeah yeah, I know. yeah. so there's there was kind of like that weirdness to get over because you know the first class they're like okay you might be making a project for your grandchild and I'm like Ooh, not really I better not be making um, a project for my grandchild I better not be having yeah. a grandchild right now mm -hmm. <laughs> And the class was, um, I actually, I pulled out like a whole bunch of quilts because I didn't know what you were going to want to see. But um, so this was the quilt that we made in the class. Um, mm -hmm. It's this one, which is like okay. a pretty basic pattern. But like at the time, you know, I picked wild and crazy fabric and they were just kind of like, that's what you're going to pick, huh? <laughs> <laughs> and I, why not? It's cute. I love the I mean, texture. That was when I kind of started figuring out, like maybe I do things a little different. But um, it was, yeah, it was just, it was very traditional. Like we learned the nine patch block. So mm -hmm. there's like the nine patch, oh, right here, and then the churn mm -hmm. dash blocks right here. So it's really easy. And then it had like a double border, but um. But yeah, it was just one of those things where I was like, okay, like maybe I have a little more of a modern eye versus like the traditional stance. Yeah. Um, and I also, I felt like it was a little, it was portrayed to be a little more elite than I always thought that quilting was. Um, yeah. A lot of quilt, quilt shop people, and not that one in particular, because that place is, you know, they have some really good things about their shop too. Um, but they'll say like, in order to make a quilt, it needs to be archive quality and, you know, top shelf quilt quality. And it's like, you can end up spending hundreds of dollars. Yeah. And I, I don't quite know that that's the way that quilting was designed to be, at least for me, like yeah. I wanted something my kids could throw on the ground and like drag behind them on a bike or snuggle up against and I mean, if it wears holes in it after 20 years, then it's done its job. I mean, I, plus I was still learning, I was messing up. So I was like spending all this money on fabric had me terrified. I thought like, I'm never going to make a quilt because I don't want to mess it up because mm -hmm. if I have to spend $14 a yard on fabric, then, you know, it was just, it was too much. Like I, I'm an anxious person anyway. And then I was just overthinking too much, but places like, Joann's or Hobby Lobby or, you know, getting fun fabric that I could experiment with, I found out that like, it's fine. Yeah. You know, like getting into like quilting more and going to groups or joining a guild and you see that people are literally using any fabric, like old shirts or old baby clothes or old blankets. And then it's just like, okay, I can breathe, like I can do this. So it's different than the way I learned it, but I like it better, if that makes sense. So you mentioned the guild. Are you a part of the guild? Um, yes and no. So there's the Uhuru Quilters Guild out of Maryland. Okay. Um, and it's it's a black women's guild, which I love. I haven't heard about um, this. You need that information. <laughs> yeah, yes. So I actually I met the lady on Facebook. Um, we were in a craft group together. And she pinged me and she's like, you know, I quilt. And if you ever want to come to a meeting, here's the information. And then she reached out to me because I'm a hardcore introvert. So I was like, oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> um, and then she reached out to me again. And she's like, we're having a meeting. Like, please come meet with us. And it was the most amazing group of women like they meet. But it's like way past Landover. Like it's it's mm -hmm. out there. Um, so it takes like an hour and 20 minutes to get there. And they meet <laughs> one Saturday. Yeah, they meet one Saturday a month. So back when my daughters were running track, like it was super hard. So I pay my membership. I'm very active online, but I only go to like three or four meetings a year, which isn't as many as I would like to. So I'm like active, but not active. Um, I've, I've tried a couple local ones. Um, haven't really found my, 
my match yet. So it's, it's so interesting that you mentioned feeling a kind of way about how people seem to think that you should be quilting, right? Um, and I, I, I think I talked to you about this. The very first quilt I made did not turn out well, and it turned out way too small. I got mm -hmm. the fabric from Walmart. It was a bunch of superhero, like Marvel characters. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it was about, a, it was big enough, I'd say, for an, a younger elementary school kid. And I just like, I didn't measure anything. <laughs> I just cut it and pieced it together and sewed mm -hmm. it and layered it. And I used flannel on the back, which didn't go so well with the batting, which was polyester. And it was yeah. just a messy mess. Yeah. And I was, I was like, you know what, though? I know I've been watching, because I'm the kind of person who I will get so deep into doing the research that I think, oh, that's so beautiful. I'll never get there. So I won't even try. I won't right. start. And right. I was like, you know what? So I, and then you have to remind yourself, what you see on social media are people who show you their best. It's with the photograph. It's with their photographs that they take of themselves. It's with the work that they put yeah. out there. They're not going to show you the process. And I'm like, you know what? I'll show the process because everyone's got to start somewhere. So then the second one I made, I made for me and I messed it up. Like the front turned out great. <laughs> I had to piece together like two 44 inch wide pieces yeah. of fabric to make the back, yeah. right? And I was like, okay. And then I used the method where you put the face and the back together and the batting on top and you flip it inside out so that you don't yeah. have to bind. Because at the time yeah. I was kind of overwhelmed by the idea of binding. So right. then I flip it and I sew it. And then I look on the back and it's the inside on the outside. <laughs> Oh no! But, for, but you know what? It was for me to sit around the house. I love my little quilt. It's, it's, yeah. I sit under it every day. No one else sees the back, and no one cares. And like that's another big thing with quilting is that people will say that you know if you don't hand bind it, that it's not a real quilt, or you're not truly quilting. And I machine bind everything. So sometimes my corners look great. Sometimes they look a little wonky. I've been over them two or three times, but. I mean, I I think finished is better than perfect. Yes. So, I mean, I have a lot of, I don't square up my quilt tops because I'm like, you know what? It's just part of the magic because I, there's a part of me that is just kind of like, you can almost take it so far that you don't enjoy it anymore. If you're trying to line up every line and seam and, and my quilts don't go into magazines. So they all snuggle not, just exactly i'm not selling them i'm not displaying them yeah. i'm not like people are like you gotta because i made labels so i mm -hmm. made a quote for my sister i use an african queen block to make one for my sister uh-huh i'm gonna put it on the back that i made it and when it was made so she has that information the third quilt that i finished was not the third quilt i started the third quilt i started was for my adopted mother who recently passed away and i was so hurt because oh, i was so God. caught up on getting the binding right and mm -hmm. i undid it and did it three times and then she passed away of ovarian cancer. They found it in late January and then she was gone April 1st. And so I never got it to her before she passed. And I finished yeah. the binding. It wasn't perfect and it's a little bumpy, but I, I sent it to her. But then the third quilt I finished was actually one for my oldest son. Mm -hmm. Again, marble pattern, but it turned out a lot better. I was able to free, free, freehand quilt it on my little machine. Finally got that right. And he loves it and I love it. I think it looks great. Yeah. But like I said, with practice, it gets better. And then oh. I upgraded my machine. I spent $500 on a machine, Trish. What did you get? I got the Janome 3160. It's okay. computerized. It's got the nice. automatic thread. Yeah. Yeah. I already love it. Because I was running through thread. And Isn't now it's like. Amazing? Like when you go from that different. startup machine to like a, a real machine. I felt like I went from like an 87 Toyota to like a Mercedes. Yes. Oh my I God. I couldn't believe it. I was like, it's going to cut my thread. <laughs> got a threader. I'm not yeah. sitting there for five minutes. I'm not pulling the string out. I'm yeah. not pulling the string out to thread yeah. it because if I don't, it'll unthread itself. Right. And I have to rethread it again. Right. But it's crazy because I, didn't. I almost feel like I could sew on anything at this point because I made it like this big. The first one I showed you, I quilted on my tiny little $69 machine. And this one's like 108 mm -hmm. inches. It's huge. But I had it rolled up like a big, you know, snake, like putting it on my back and <laughs> quilting it all underneath. It was it was mess, but it worked out. But yeah, now you feel like you can sew on anything, right? 
was. I mean, because I, I did four technically yeah. on that $69 machine. Yep. And yep. that little first one I gave, I gave to a friend's son. He didn't care about the errors and the puppy yeah. parts. He loved it. He yeah. saw Marvel and fell in love. I was like, see, it's about yeah. that. That's the best so part. You show me, and I see it behind you, mm -hmm. the taco club. You're yeah. the one who introduced me to paper piecing. Tell me about it. <laughs> yeah. So this one, um, this one was part of a challenge. Where's its friend? So it was supposed to be, this one isn't quilted. It's just the top, um, but it's from mm -hmm. pen and paper patterns. And it was the ice cream quilt along. And it oh. was last summer. Um, and it was supposed to be with an ice cream truck. So I did mine in kind of like a neon theme um, mm -hmm. with the different cones and stuff. And then the truck, so I made that one for my daughter. And then I made the taco truck for my son. <laughs> so the tacos, like the truck was supposed to be like an ice cream truck. And then you do it with the different ice creams. And then the bonus pattern was the paper pieced tacos. But mm -hmm. I had never um, paper pieced before. So I was like, well, let me just try to make these tacos. Like I'm from California. I figured I'll make this for my brother. It'll be great because he and I love to eat tacos whenever I go home. Um, so I picked this taco fabric for the back. <laughs> the chilies, yes. That's so cheesy. <laughs> I love um, that. That's so speaking of mistakes, there's lots and lots in this quilt. Like, and it's funny because when I hold it up, like you can't see it. It's like, oh my gosh, it looks great. Um, lots and lots of mistakes from where like here's one where my fabric doesn't quite meet. Um, mm -hmm. I just quilted right over that. There's quite a few little areas on the the lettuce and the tacos, but paper piecing was so hard. It it was like one of those things that I just had to, I'm visual and so I like to see, like if someone demonstrates something, I can do it. But if someone's just telling me how to do it, it was really hard. So it was really hard for me to fathom how to place it upside down and then make sure it overlapped, but overlapped the opposite direction. And then so it like, it was, it was very hard for me. It took me, yeah. this one probably took me longer than any of my other quilts did. I sew pretty quickly, but I had to come back to this. <laughs> like at one point I was like, I gotta put this down because I'm defeated by the tacos. Um, yeah. I wanna say there were 24 tacos in here of the blocks. And yeah, it it took a while for me to do, but in the end, it took so long, I refused to give it to him because <laughs> he's in the Navy and he's like, oh, you know, I can take it with me on the ship. And I was like, no, 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 no. Like, do you know how long this took me and how many pieces went into that truck? I'm like, no, sir, you're not taking it on ship to like lose it or, you know, I want you to Water use it. <laughs> yeah, I don't want you to lose it. Like, it's too soon. It, like, no, it's too soon. So I ended up keeping it and I gave it to my son. So then I made the little, the neon partner for my daughter. I just haven't, I have so many that I haven't quilted. I do not enjoy like quilting. I have learned so, that about myself. Because when you told me when you first started, you would send it out to be quilted. When did you, when did you start doing it yeah. yourself and why did you start doing it yourself? So I, um, here's one that I sent out to be quilted. I tried to be prepared, see, I tried to be a good guest. Um, this was another one that I did as part of an Instagram challenge from, um, I think it's Quilty Love, I think is her handle, but she did like a Valentine's Day heart quilt. And I was like, I don't want to have a Valentine's Day quilt in my house all year. And then yeah, I don't really trade out for holidays and stuff. So I did it in black and white. Um, and then I put leopard on the back. Nice. It's very me. So this is like my quilt so like coral <laughs> and leopard on it. Um, I sent this one out to be quilted. It it came out really good. I like it. Um, I feel like when I send them out, they come out flatter than when I do mm -hmm. it myself because you know they put them on the frames and they just stretch them better. But I quilted, I quilt most of them myself, and I started doing that when I upgraded my machine. Okay. So um, what are you using machine-wise? 
So I have a Bernina 770, the, um, I bought the gold one because, you know, gaudy and I just wanted to, it was a limited edition. Now they have like the fancy tool <laughs> one and it's like super cute with all, it's all iridescent with polka dots, but I'm like, no, the gold is like so much more me. I just saw it and it was so pretty, but um, the only thing that sold me on Bernina over the Janome was that they have this mega bobbin mm. and it holds like 80% more than the traditional bobbin. I wish I had known that, but so. I, I, I hovered <laughs> over purchase for that than oh, what I, I got. I know. I mean, it's so weird because we buy thousand dollar phones and two thousand dollar computers, yeah. but that machine, I was like, <laughs> oh no, I mm -hmm. it took me like a good year, and I drove all the way. Um, I was out in Hampton at a quilt show, and I ran into a lady from Alexandria, and she's like, oh, you know, what did you come for? And I was like, well, I came here hoping to get the limited edition Bernina, but they only have the the regular faceplate with the silver. And I was like, you know, I'm trying to hold out and see if I can find one because it was the very end of their display year. And she's like, oh, I think I have one that I haven't sold. And I was like, oh, I'm going to hug Jimmy you. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's, um, I just got really lucky. She just happened to have one like in her stock room that she didn't sell. So it worked out. Yeah. Now but, you miss, I'm sorry, go ahead. <laughs> no, I was just going to say, but justifying the cost of the machine, I was like, I need to quilt my own quilts now because it, I quilted, I sent one out. Um, I took it to the, the quilter studio that I was telling you about and they charged like two cents per square foot, which mm -hmm. seems like, oh my God, that's not that much money. Um, I got a quilt done for my grandmother and a quilt done for my aunt and it was just under $400. Yeah, that was my base too. Um, like American dollars, 400 rupees. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> by the time you add the fabric and the batting and the quilting, you know, and I gave it to my grandma and she's like, oh my God, this is beautiful. Like, I bet I could take this to the church for the raffle. And I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> ma'am, Miss ma Ma'am, no, 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 no. <laughs> Like, no, 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 this is for you and only you. Like, I want you to use it every day. Um, so it was like one of those things where it's like, I didn't want to tell her how much it was. You with this cool lady. Right, like, I didn't want to tell her how much it was because then she wouldn't want to use it. But I didn't, I, I needed her to know that like, this is not for you to donate. This is for you. You are the only person. Um, because yeah, like that experience made me start looking at, um, here's another one that I got quilted. From and this is from a lady in the quilters guild because I tried to find a, a lady sister to get quilted because I'm like let me keep my money over here in the guild um and she quilted mm -hmm. this one for me for Christmas with like swirls mm -hmm. and it's beautiful um yeah. but it was still it was like right at a hundred and twenty dollars to get it mm -hmm. quilted and I was like yeah if I buy my machine and I make one quilt a month and I quilt it, it pays for itself. Yeah, on top of that, you said it was the Bernina, which one? 770. Seven, seven. Yeah, the QE, the quilters edition. Um, I don't do embroidery or anything fancy. Um, it sounds like it would be cool, but I just got the, <clears throat> the quilters one. Um, but yeah, this was one that I, yeah. I'm noticing a lot more combo quilting embroidery machines. Yeah, the embroidery add-on was like a thousand dollars, and I'm sorry. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There was like a part of me that said it would be really great to get it because then I could embroider and make stuff. But then you know, common sense is like, what are you? What are you going to embroider? Nothing. That is. I'm looking at this. This is. Oh, girl. It's a beast. Awesome. It's a beast. I, I see. <laughs> Look at this price tag. I see. <laughs> well, yeah. So um, I bought it at a show, so they gave me a discount there, and then they had zero oh, percent financing, was... which is great okay. because then that's where I said, like, if I were to be sending out one quilt a month, that's like the equivalent of making the payment. So it also keeps me honest with my quilting because I'm like, if I'm not continuing to quilt then I wasted the money 
Yeah. Oh, but for sure. If you saw how many quilt tops I'm sitting around right now, you would see. <laughs> And that's what I said when I went ahead and bought mine. It's not yeah. as high in yours, but I said, you know what? I'm enjoying this. I'm going to continue to do it. Yeah. So let's do this. Let's do this. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, and you can do it better and you can do it more efficiently with a better machine, you know? Yeah. So I, I never would have been able to, I have, um, here's another pretty big one that I did. I wouldn't have been able to quilt this on my, my tiny machine. Um, mm -hmm. This is the sister quilt to one that I made for my daughter. I made her mm -hmm. one um, with, she wanted something in like a 30s kind of style. Like she wanted it very scrappy um, mm -hmm. and she wanted it to be random. So I sewed together all of these little strip sets to be random. And then I completely overcut. So that's like one of the things that I am really bad at is estimating fabric. I tend mm -hmm. to go really big. Um, <clears throat> so I have a ton of leftovers with every quilt, but I had enough to make her a queen size quilt for her bed. And then I had this one, which is another queen leftover. <laughs> wow. So cutting. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me about your cutting. And um, I think you talked about the fact that you have an Acu quilt. I do, and I love it. I um, I got it for forty percent off, right before they stopped selling them at Joanne's. I need to start shopping with you. I swear, I can never find. <laughs> you. I'm a bargain shopper. So Joanne's um stopped carrying them like in store, so they had forty percent off everything cutting, and I was like, oh you know, are the AccuQuilts included? And the lady's like, I don't know. And she scanned it and it came up for like $65 for the unit. I was like, oh, sold. Let me get that. <laughs> Let me get all these dies. Let me get everything I can carry. I went to like four wow. Joanne stores in this area to get like every, and I haven't bought a die since. Um, but I just <laughs> got like, because I just got the basic ones. You know, I got like strips, um, five inch squares, um, like basic like half square triangle stuff that saves me time um i really like it sometimes it it really helps to cut down on the waist and make things really accurate so when i was doing the um the nc state quilt um i have that one right here i have the top but when i was trying to make the little blocks because they had to line up perfectly um yeah. I, unless you're cutting one at a time, it's really hard to do that with fabric and cutting one at a time. I would have spent a week just cutting material for this. I did it in probably an hour. Wow. Um, I just put all the strips through the machine and then you can turn them to the side and it cuts two and a half inch squares. And so I was able to cut over a thousand two and a half inch square. Wow. And yeah, it was probably about an hour, maybe a little more. Um, but I like it because it just, it makes it a lot more accurate. Like my, I notice things line up much mm -hmm. better than when I try to cut by hand and like it, sometimes I veer a little or it slides. Always match, yeah. yeah, or if you use two different rulers, you know, it may be just a little bit off. And I mean, that little bit, can change when it's a quilt when you need everything to be in alignment so um i like having the accu quilt i know some quilt shops will let you like rent them if you want to go in and just use the dies i've heard they're really good for applique i don't applique mm -hmm. too often i only tried it one time i made a um i made a city girls quilt <laughs> for my friend when she got <laughs> when she got divorced i put city girls oh, lyrics on a quilt um, <laughs> I just said that's awesome. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's the divorce, the quote, the quote. Not right, the right. So I, I put that one on my on my Instagram page, but um, because yeah, people in you know quilting, they were like, oh, what does that mean? But I'm like, oh, if you know, you know. <laughs> What's interesting oh. about what you said about doing like modern? I'm in a modern embroidery group, uh -huh. and it's so interesting. You can tell when people are just joining groups because it says something that they do. Yeah, I love the modern embroidery group because it's not all flowers. Some of them are political statements. Some are are not safe for work. Amazing, gorgeous pieces. And yeah. when people post them, 
And folks are like, you're tarnishing the reputation of embroidery. It's kind of like what you were saying with the whole going into a quilt class. And it's like, you are in the wrong group because I think this is why. And if you didn't like it, you could have scrolled on by. That's the rules of the group. But it's so interesting that people want to keep things in a box instead of letting people be creative. And it's interesting too, when I think about the fact that a lot of things that we as Black people used to do and some and still do have been created as whites only spaces and not deliberately, but by yeah. default. Yeah. So I think full team and I was at the, um, I went to Manassas to the, uh, what's it called? It's called a, no, it's a museum. It's a museum right downtown uh, near oh. Old Town. Okay. And there's two quilts that were created by slaves that are proudly yeah. displayed in there. And it's like, we use that for communicate. We use quilts for communication. Yeah. We've been sewing forever. Like we'll yeah. sit in a group, and we'll do black people sew. Like we had to, we had no choice. That's right. how we made my clothes. Right. My grandmother tried to teach me to sew when I was little, but I wanted to be outside, but she sold all her own clothes. Yeah. And it's that whole idea that just because Americans seem to slot it as this is usually this is that's what white people do worldwide. Everyone is doing this to some degree and putting their own cultural flair on it. You know what yeah. I mean? I don't know if that makes sense. No, that makes it makes a lot of sense. I and that is that's definitely something near and dear to me. Like lear, learning more about quilting and like my grandma was a seamstress as well. She used to make all my clothes, my Halloween costumes, and yeah, I also had no intention of sewing. So I was like, no thanks, I'll go work with So yeah, she gets a big kick out of me being a quilter now because I, I would never sew um, back then. She still wouldn't let me have her sewing machine, but um, <laughs> but yeah, it, it was like when you look at, I really want to go to, I think it's, is it G or is it G? G's Bend? I don't know how it's pronounced. I know what I've you're talking it, about. I've heard it both pronounced. ways, but I know they're out in like Alabama or something, but I was looking up their story online and I really want to go out there because it's getting back to like improv quilting and doing what slaves did was make it, make something beautiful out of scraps and what they had. And yeah. I went to, um, so I used to travel a lot for work and I was able to do some work in Brazzaville in Congo. And I, in my off time, I used to like to go walk in the markets and they would sew on these machines that were, I mean, they were ancient. They were still like the treadles where they were pumping with their feet in order to make the the needle move. The ne yeah. And they were making clothes like on the spot, like they'll measure you, they'll make clothes. And they had like tons and tons of just wasted fabric. And so let me try to find that quilt. Um, So I brought back like, I, I'm in training. And so I went out there with like boxes of training, suitcases full of training gear. Um, so I had all these empty suitcases and I was like, great, I can get some fabric. So I brought back fabric <laughs> <laughs> and I made, um, I made a quilt out of the little scraps that I bought in the marketplace. And I made oh this one. God, gorgeous. Oh, that's so pretty. So it's got like all different, all different colors, all different stripes. Um, yeah. I brought back a ton of fabric, but like the little pieces, I just cut up into tiny strips. And mm -hmm. and we always see African quilts with the color black. And yes. I don't know why that is. Like, I, I don't know if it's, but it's like, I was reading this thing about like color connotation and color theory. And I'm kind of like, well, why can't we be with bright colors and, and mm -hmm. brightness and attributed with like light. And um, so that's why I put white in this quilt instead of black. But then mm -hmm. my daughter was like, oh, they look like teeth. And I was like, great. I can't <laughs> You ruined my quilt. So I think <laughs> like teeth. Yeah. She was like, oh, they look like pirate teeth. And I was like, all right, thanks. Um, <laughs> so I put this away and I didn't touch it for like a year. And so all the strips were sewn together because I'm like, I already cut up my treasured fabric that I brought halfway across the world. You told me it looks like teeth. Now it's ruined, right? Um, <laughs> And so then I, but I've, I've gotten more and more, I've been back to Africa twice since then, and I've brought back more fabric. So then I, I had some longer pieces and I mixed them in and then I added a border and I was like, you know, cause I was like quarantine, I'm, I'm going to make this work. Like I'm going to try to finish all these UFOs. And this one was one of my favorites. So now they don't look as much like teeth. See, cause it's like once I, I say it, 
once you see it maybe you i didn't i don't think they look like teeth maybe i needed to see it in a different yeah. connotation i don't think they look like yeah. teeth it's funny you're finishing ufos i'm creating them like i have the incredible yeah. quilt top i did on mother's day yeah. and then i have that black and gold one i've been working on and now i'm starting this infinity gauntlet one for my son that we talked about before good. we started recording good but i don't have enough backing or batting to finish them oh no you'll be fine I'll make them. I'll make them and then once yeah. you just once you just gotta make them. Stop, yes, once make them, stop, them is the hard part. <laughs> yeah. And with the backs, like a back can literally be anything. Yeah. I I like putting like funny things on the back that aren't expected. So like I showed you my leopard, or like this one I have like sea otters doing some wild like sea space otter thing. Like I just pick weird fabric to go on the backs of things. Um, I don't even worry about it matching or anything. Sometimes I think it's kind of fun when it doesn't match. But then it's like, <laughs> surprise, it's crazy on the other side. When I give quilts as gifts, I usually put um, something crazy on the other side. So like my daughter's friend went to Virginia Tech and I made her mm -hmm. a Virginia Tech quilt on the front. Um, mm -hmm. And then on the back, I put a whole bunch of foxes. So I could be oh. like, hey, so you know someone gives a fox <laughs> mom jokes <laughs> but i was like i, I want you to feel love that's cool <laughs> and yeah she was like this is so corny and ridiculous but she still laughs about it oh that's adorable <laughs> i saw her like right before quarantine she's like i still have my quilt with the fox and i was like yep see <laughs> <laughs> so it works out oh oh Thank you so much for taking this time with me. This was fun. I just wanted to, because I, like I said, I've been doing a lot of photographers, but I wanted to do oh. some crafters and you immediately came to mind because just when we talked and you talked about how you got started and how you developed, I was like, and I love, like you, like you said, you just put your own flair on it and it's fun and it's meaningful and it's done with love. And I just had to highlight that. So thank you. Oh, I appreciate it. There's like, there's so many different ways to quilt, you know, there's like, and it's just, I think it's really cool to find your own style. Like I wouldn't say I'm like a modern or traditional or whatever quilter. Like I, I just do what's fun. Like I get inspired by all the different colors and, you know, the different patterns. And I think it's just fun to create something that brings you joy when you look at it. So I'm always happy to talk about being a young, black, tattooed, weird quilter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to join the club. I'm black. I'm older, but I'm black. Yeah, I'm stopping. See? There's what are cool you? I can start a revolution. <laughs> I'm less than a decade away from AARP status. Give me my discounts. <laughs> I'm ready for my discount. <laughs> nice to step from outside the the camera a bit because yeah like on instagram i i don't really post myself i just post my quilts because i'm like you know my bio is like i like trap music and making stuff <laughs> <laughs> not as exciting as it is you know so thank you i appreciate the time to talk no problem <laughs>